John Gormley, Senator Pamela Wallen uh, in studio. Uh, Pam Wallen, uh, the newest senator of Saskatchewan's six, uh, named recently by Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh, I was curious when, and a lot of people, again, don't know the, the work done by senators in committees. And when I was in the House, I always used to marvel at, you know, there were some senators who just simply weren't there much. Yeah. For whatever reason, they just weren't there no much. No question, there were bad apples. There were others <laughs> who, you know, you weren't sure. But we used to call it the 30-30-30 principle. But there was at least a third of the yeah. senators who, in committees especially, yeah. uh, did worked their hearts out. leading edge work, worked their hearts out, really opened up, I thought, a lot of really interesting issues. You're working in defense. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting committee because <laughs> it seems to have a great, I think publicly, a, a good bit of influence in the Afghanistan issue. Colin Kenny, the longtime liberal, now he chairs that because yes. of the minority parliament. And I'm the co-chair. I'm the deputy chair. Okay, so you'd be the top-ranking Tory on that. Yes, then. just okay. because we're in the minority in the Senate, too, not just in the House of Commons, so that means we don't have the leadership on these committees. So in this committee, uh, when you look at the Afghanistan work, uh, you were very centrally involved, uh, what, three, four years ago now mm. on the Manley Committee. Two years. Two yeah. years ago. Yeah. And Prime Minister Harper named you to that. John Manley, the ex-liberal uh, deputy prime minister, others on this panel. Your Afghanistan recommendations served in many respects as the beginning of the 2011 issue. Yeah. Is that a fair thing I to say? I think it or? really was the, the crystallization of the whole issue. Yes, the Defense Committee had looked at it, but it was kind of in a different way. Um, we were brought in, I mean, don't forget that we went into this uh, war right after 9-11 uh, alongside the Americans under Jean Chrétien, then Paul Martin in 2005 put us into Kandahar, uh, into the uh, very toughest part of the tough neighborhood there. And then uh, Prime Minister Harper continued that with an extension through, and there was really a debate in 2007, 2008 about what we were going to do. So that was, our, that was our task, which is to figure out what should be the nature of our mission, how long we should stay, what we need if we're going to do it, just to look at the whole question. i got to say he was completely open about that. You guys go and figure out what you want to talk about and tell me uh, what you've concluded at the end. And we did conclude that, and I think this was no surprise, that the mission was com absolutely worthwhile. This was a UN-NATO mission. It was not when after two, 2005. So we were there with all the imprimatur of the multilateral organizations, not just uh, being there as an ally and friend of the United States. We were there because we lost people in 2001 as well at 9-11. Uh, and we were there for humanitarian purposes and all those things were working together. Um, we needed more and better equipment. NATO allies have been less than uh, valuable to us there. A lot of the Germans are on site in Afghanistan, but they don't fight and they don't leave their base. And they've got good equipment, but we can't use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we did manage as a result of, the, of our report, I think, to get you know, more helicopters in, which means getting our young men and women off the ground, which means they don't get blown up quite so easily with those IEDs. Um, and and we're, you know, we're moving forward with that, but you just don't go and buy a helicopter tomorrow. You know, the, you're on a waiting list. The fact that the Americans are now sending in reinforcements is, I think, part of our work. We certainly asked for that and talked to them about that, and they're sending in 17,000 more soldiers. Uh, and we do need boots on the ground and 4,000 more to do training. And I think we can accomplish a lot. Um, it's hard when young men and women are losing their lives, and we're now at 117. Well, on this last one, this uh, mm -hmm. young trooper, Kareen Blair, the second woman to have yep. died, um, and I don't know if it's her age, if she was only there two weeks, if she's a, it's the fact that she's a young woman. I'm noticing now, and it's kind mm -hmm. of a whites of your eyes thing, yeah. people who've been pretty supportive of yeah. why we're there are now, st now starting to look away. They're going, well, well I'm not sure. Like, Are you getting the sense um, that the appetite of Canadians, and even Stephen Harper in the last election said, yeah. after 2011, he yeah. questions the appetite. Yeah. No, I think that's really true. It also came, there was this juxtaposition of events where we had a woman uh, rights activist in Afghanistan killed. Uh, we're seeing women being stoned on the streets again. There's this talk about the rape law uh, w with Karzai as the president there running for re-election and looking for things to, you know, balance his base there. So I think people are saying, what is the progress? The problem is, it's very hard to report the progress back in Canada.
Canada because our reporters, uh, the Canadian reporters, can't get out into the areas because of the safety issue, because insurance is really expensive, because it's not like a, a war where there's a front line and the good guys have on white hats and the bad guys have on black hats. The, in a counterinsurgency and insurgency, you don't know who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. It's a very high-risk target, a very high-risk area. So I think that's the problem, and I think people are saying, where's the progress? But we did stand in those schools, and we did see 10, 11, 12-year-old girls starting to write and have the uh, their faces bare and, and being able to contemplate a future. You've got to remember that there was a whole middle class, an educated class of, of women there, that this was totally brutalized and dismantled by the Taliban. Women were lined up at a stadium in Kabul and shot dead. You know, it's going to take a while to come back from that, but there's a very, very strong base there that needs to be allowed to grow. We are not going to have a victory, as in, we've won, it's done, let's get on the planes and go home. It's not going to work that way. Our victory is that the Afghans themselves can take over responsibility for this. That's why we've got such the uh, such an emphasis on training and getting the police forces and the armies up to speed. I think if we can do that, that's the best we can do. We're making great progress, and I think we will have... I think we will have uh, we'll have a very good sense of that by 2011. So your work on the Defense Committee yeah. of the Senate, uh, what's your sense now, though it's a liberal-dominated committee, yeah. is is that a, is everybody essentially pulling the same way on this issue? Yeah, I think that we have issues there that we have to look at. For example, the veterans. That's an ongoing issue, and we're trying to get that. Uh, you don't have a veteran subcommittee, though, do you? We don't, not yet, and we're, we're just trying to get that up and running, and there's just been some resistance, but I think in, in the end that... that that common sense will prevail and that uh, Senator Kenny will, will agree to this because we're dealing with this. Just last week I was in the hospital in Ottawa, the Ottawa Civic talking with our vets that have come home. Um, this is, and this is again how we have to change our mindset. We tend in Canada to think of vets as the guys from World War One and World War Two, and uh, that they're aging and that we're starting to lose them. We have got... 25 year olds. Uh, we've got 22 and 23 and 25 year olds coming home and we've got to figure out how they are going to live their lives right. and figure out what a, what a modern uh, approach to veterans affairs is going to mean. So that takes some really serious thinking in my mind. And in many respects, you also, and I think any parliamentarian has this duty, and that's to deal with helping the public understand things. Yes. And because and, and the way the public treats those heroes, yeah. I think, is as critical yeah. as the support they get or the housing allowance or the education allowance get. I mean, they've got to, hopefully as Canadians, we've got to understand the immense sacrifice these, these men and women have made. It, it is truly breathtaking, John. I mean, and even last week, sitting there talking to these guys and the, the wounds that they receive now when they're in a vehicle and they go over an IED, the concussion, I mean, they come back with everything from the foot up broken just mm. that concussion pressure there and they lose their teeth and and there was one young fellow there who had lost both his legs and an arm and and this is a young guy and his young wife is standing beside him and you know even from them you hear and this is not bravado this is i did the right thing i chose to go there and the minute i can go back i will so when you're hearing that from them, you've got to know that they've got some sense that they're making progress on the ground. Amazing. Pam Wallen, always good having you by. Thank you, ma'am. Great. Pamela Wallen, you. Saskatchewan's newest senator uh, in the province doing uh, some speaking engagements. And I thought we'd spend a little time today on her work on defense, Afghanistan, and some of the issues to look ahead to.